Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm gonna be sitting down doing my makeup. I'm not gonna be talking about the makeup, but if you are interested in the products that I'm using, everything will be listed down in the description box. So I'm gonna be reading a piece that I had written probably about a month ago, but finished about last week. Um, this is a piece that I really hope inspires you and encourages you that no matter where you are in life, no matter the journey that it has been to get to this point, no matter what you're struggling with or anything, that God can and will use you. Um, that your calling has absolutely no expiration date, but it is up to you to move forward. So we'll get started. How many of us feel like we can't have a ministry because of past decisions and mistakes? me i feel that way i felt that way for years um and that has truly set me back and made me value the opinions of others more than i value god's and that's just the harsh reality of it that you're putting more value in the opinions of others than you are in listening to the direction that god has put on your life um, the very word ministry might fill you with anxiety and sadness because you feel like you've missed your opportunity to be this upright, pure, trailblazing, wonderful, fire-stoking people of God because you just missed your opportunity. And you've done too much. You've failed too many times. You've sinned too much. To levels of sin. You've just sinned too high like you you've reached your limit you've done too many bad things like the unforgivable sins that you know we don't talk about in the church you might feel that way you might feel like it's just too late for you and this is all it is and you have messed up your calling to the extent that it is no longer for you it's so sad how we hold on to past sins and mistakes and we can't let go of it um, even though those sins have been long forgiven we cling to them as if our very lives depended on it um because we refuse to let ourselves go let those things go that we've done we hold on to them we don't forgive ourselves and we continuously punish ourselves for for our past mistakes even even if it has been decades upon decades we hold on to it and never move forward and i want to move forward I don't want to be so stuck in the past that I cannot grow because I, I'm refusing to let myself move forward because I continuously punish myself and feel like I don't deserve to move forward. I feel like I have missed my opportunity to lead people to God and, and be a good person because I've just missed out on my calling. I refuse to live like that anymore. Um, I've spent too much of my life living like that and whether you've spent 20 years feeling that way or two months it's too long because it's not of God it's not right and we know this but we still cling to it and we're so pro forgiveness for other people but when it comes to us we just can't let go and we need to get to a point where that's no longer the case. We become so petrified that somebody will bring up the past and, and who we once were. We're terrified of it. And, and we feel like we can't move forward because we have sins on our conscience and on our past. So we just avoid it and we lay low and and you're in church but you just never move forward you feel like you can't teach you feel like you can't lead people to God you just you're there but you're not fulfilling the calling that you have on your life you may very well know the stories in the Bible but somehow you can't relate it to yourself but God uses sinners we're all sinners your favorite pastor sinner people you look up to sinner if you know my grandmother, my godly, godly, fierce warrior of Jesus Christ, grandmother, sinner. It is what it is. Like, we have all fallen short and none of us are, are spotless. That's just how it is. That's part of life. We live in a fallen world, but somehow we expect to, to be flawless and 
to go through life without sin and it's like once you mess up to a certain extent you feel like there's no getting past it there's no recovery that God has now changed your calling because you've just messed it up so much but that's not true that is so not true that is a lie from the pit of hell hear me that is an absolute lie and the reason you're feeling that way is because the enemy wants you to because if you don't feel that way you're leading people to God I don't know about y'all but I don't want to be influenced by the enemy more than I'm influenced by oh I don't want to be influenced at all but I want to listen to God and move forward and and be that good person to be the person who can lead others to God and regardless of me messing up in life regardless of you messing up in life I don't care what you've done I don't um, God can use you and restore you and help your story be your testimony to get others to go to Christ it's just that way and we just we refuse to believe that for ourselves we believe it for other people we love stories of other people when they come from rock bottom let's be honest as Christians we love the rock bottom story for other people and we look at their testimony as such a beautiful story of God's grace but it's just not a right fit for you and we have got to get to the point where we don't let the enemy lead us and and hold us back because I don't want to I don't want to continue to live my life feeling like I've done too much wrong to do any good I want to lead people to God and I guarantee you that there will be somebody who watches me one day on this on this channel and doing these videos that's gonna think how did that happen how how does she feel like she has a right to do that how you know I guarantee you there will be because I'm human and I have messed up and I'm not denying that in any way and and even still it's not gonna hold me back and keep me from growing and I'm doing exactly what I feel like I'm called of God to do and at the end of the day I answer to God I don't answer to you so if this makes absolutely no sense to you it doesn't matter because I'm doing what I feel like is called on my life all these amazing acts in the Bible were done by people who have fallen short and failed and were simply human but we don't relate that to ourselves. We feel like our reputation is so tainted that we can never move forward from it. And that's simply not true. Your testimony, your reputation is not tainted. It has great weight to it because you have tasted the grace of God. And that to me has more value than somebody who has been the goody goody do gooder their entire life because you have seen the forgiveness of God and how beautiful and without condition that is. There's great depth in the stories from people who have experienced hell on earth. Marvelous forms of forgiveness and exoneration, but even still, you don't feel like it relates to you. And if you feel that way, know that my heart is with you because I've felt that way for a very long time and I hope that you reach your awakening moment and move forward from this. We so often reference the story of the Sumerian woman at the well. That's our go-to, go-to story for forgiveness. Probably because it's a female who was married five times and is shacking up with somebody that's probably why because that that just seems like that's a male pastor's go-to like that's the worst thing you could possibly do and we skim over murder and adultery and all of that done by these men in the bible but god forbid 
the woman who was married five times and was shacking up with a guy. Not saying it's not wrong, but that's the go-to, that's the go-to, go-to story of forgiveness. And I feel like we need to, especially for, for women coming up, or not even coming up, the women in our church, the ones who have been remarried, I feel like we need a different story of forgiveness just because that one, and I'm not saying that it's not good, it's a wonderful story, but that has been so nailed into our heads and and women who have been divorced feel like the church looks at them different. And that, I mean, let's be honest, the church, some churches do look at you differently, but we're gonna talk about a different story. And the story that I want to talk about is to me the greatest story of forgiveness and it's a sad story but it's also a beautiful story because even still God used him and he followed Jesus until death and it is a beautiful story so okay today we're going to be talking about Luke 22 54 through 62 does it ring a bell it should you need to know the story, you need to know the story, you need to know the story. This is about Simon Peter denying Jesus, not once, not twice, but three times. This is such a beautiful story of God's forgiveness. So they arrested Jesus and led him away to the chief priest's house. Peter followed at a distance. That to me is a significant detail because he, it's like, I'm with you. But I'm going to kind of, I'm going to stay back here just to, because I don't, I don't really know what's happening. I'm kind of with you, but I'm kind of like one foot out the door. We're just going to see how this plays out. Some of the men had lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard. As they sat together, Peter sat among them. A female servant, a female servant saw him as he faced the glow of the fire. She stared at him and she said, this man was with Jesus. Peter denied it by saying, I don't know him, woman. And to me, that is such a, not only are you denying it, but it's how he denies it is so defensive and just kind of like a sass mouth, like, get away from me, woman, go do your servantly duties and get out of my face. That's how it comes across. A little later, someone else saw Peter and they said, you are one of them. Peter said, not me, with an exclamation mark. Like, again, so defensive about it that not only do I not know him, but I'm going to get a little testy with you about it. About an hour later, another person insisted, isn't it obvious? This man was with him. He is a Galilean. And Peter said, I don't know what you're talking about. Just then, while he was still speaking, a rooster crowed. Then the Lord turned and looked directly at Peter. Peter remembered what the Lord had said. Before the rooster crows today, you will have said three times that you do not know me. And Peter went outside and cried bitterly. I cannot imagine the weight that he must have felt in that moment. That he was so grieved by what he had just done. Even though he was warned about it, he still did it. And I can't imagine the the level of sorrow that he must have felt in that moment. This is a man that had been with Jesus throughout. I mean, he's one of the disciples. He had been with Jesus. He had seen miracles. He had been with him. He was his friend. You know, they were, they were friends. And he still denied God or denied Jesus. But it just, it's the same man who cut off another man's ear to try to prevent Jesus's arrest like he was so zealous at times but others are this this situation he just threw his hands up and wanted to walk away I don't know him because times got hard and how many times in life when times get hard for us we want to throw our hands up and walk away from God we, we read this story like it's just so crazy that Peter would do this. But how many times in our life, when things get hard, we want to throw our hands up and we want to walk away. We want to walk away from God. 
we want to, in a sense, deny God because we are children of God, but we want to just throw our hands up and walk away. It's not that wild of a story. This happens in our daily life. Denying God is, to me, about the worst thing that you could do. But even still, God used Peter. God loved Peter and came directly to speak to him after the crucifixion. Jesus asked him three times if Peter loved him. And to me, that is so beautiful because three times he denied and three times Jesus asked if he still loved him or if he loved him. And it's just, it just goes to show you that we serve such a forgiving God, such an unconditional loving God that it doesn't matter what we do, that we can be restored. And Simon Peter followed Jesus until death. And, and it's so, it's a beautiful story to me because Simon Peter was crucified, but he didn't feel worthy enough to die the same death as Jesus. So he had them hang him upside down. And it's just, it's almost a heartbreaking story, but it's beautiful at the same time. Regardless of what you've done in the past, it's as simple as choosing to move forward and allowing your testimony to lead people to Christ. Regardless of what you've done in the past, it's as simple as choosing to move forward and allowing your testimony to lead people to Christ. You're not past the point of redemption. And if you think you are, you're putting more power in sin than you are in God. What an insult that must be, that you are putting more power in the things that you've done that you're not allowing yourself to move forward and that God can't use you anymore because you've done too much wrong. You're saying that God can't use you anymore because you're ruined. So you're like a broken toy that can sit in the corner because you're not good enough to be used. And that is so, so not true and it's so wrong. And I pray that you and me can move forward and not feel that way anymore, that we move forward. Nothing and no one can separate us from the love of God. Romans 8.38, this is the ESV version, for I'm sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation can separate us from the love of God in our Lord Christ Jesus. Memorize that verse, memorize it. And, and tell it to yourself every time that you're feeling like God can't use you because we put conditions on God's love even though his love is unconditional. And we have got to get to the point that we realize that nothing, including you, can separate yourself from the love of God. I can't separate me from God. I can't because I, I am a child of God and it's a sealed deal. It's the same for you guys. Claim that power and move mountains. You are untouchable to any and everything that God doesn't allow. So if you're being hit with criticism, downers, struggles, or whatever, know that the Father has entrusted you to handle it. Know that. Know that regardless of whatever you're going through. Know that it has been allowed by God. Don't use that to get angry at God use that to motivate you to get through it. Don't waste your life living in the past wishing you could go back and redo this or that. Wherever you are is exactly where you can move forward from. Wherever you are doesn't matter because God can use you wherever you are. Know that and, and believe it because it's true. Matthew 17 20 says and so Jesus said to them because of your unbelief for assuredly I say to you if you have faith of a mustard seed 
you can say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will be moved for nothing will be impossible for you. Claim your power as a child of God and move forward. Your ministry starts here, starts today, starts by your choice. So you move forward, choose it, choose it, choose it, choose it, because before you know it, you'll be looking back at your life, wishing that you could go back and do your calling. But you've wasted your life. And I refuse to waste any more of my life feeling like I'm not good enough to lead people to God. I'm done with it. I'm done with feeling that way. And I'm going to do everything I can in my power to move forward and use my story as fuel. So I encourage you guys to do the same. Check out artisticreligion.com. This will be a blog post. Be sure to read it. The verses that are listed in this, read them, study them, memorize them. It is so important to be fed by the word. So thank you guys for being here. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys. This eye look is gorgeous. Gorgeous. Bye.